Hey guys, Dov here with some more Total War Warhammer 2 multiplayer action, and today I'm coming at you with the Skaven. I actually haven't played Skaven much recently, and uh, yeah, wanted to get back into playing them. I have done some testing on the new nerfed Silverin Guards, which I don't know exactly when that video is coming out in relation to this, but uh, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen it or if it hasn't come out yet, Plague Monks actually traded really well, and it kind of reminded me that Plague Monks are actually a really strong unit for the Skaven overall. 750 points, they have great leadership, great offensive stats, frenzy, um, really good charge bonus too, all things considered, anti-infantry. And again, the leadership in particular makes them somewhat unique in Skaven, and they are quite a bit cheaper than Storm Vermin, of course. Um, up against the Vampire Coast, we've also got two Plague Claw Catapults. Uh, the Avalanche Mortars wanted to test them out here for Skaven Slave Slingers and a Plague Priest for Summons. We've got uh, Deathmaster Snitch and an Assassin with the Ixus Triads here, sort of a little Eshin squad. So it's a mixed Eshin and, uh, and a Clan Pestilence build. No Lord Scroll here, but on the... Vampire side, you can see already we have four units of bombers, two of which have taken significant damage from the mortars and from the uh, catapults there. There are, what is this, three carronades, four carronades, four hounds. We've got two Morngul haunters, a uh, pistol admiral on foot, and just a bunch of meat shields up front. So, yeah, my I suspected potentially bombers here. And my idea was to counterfire them with the Plague Clock Catapults. If the cannons want to dedicate themselves to counterfiring against my catapults, that's fine with me. Uh, my priority is to take out the bombers so that my Plague Monks can then come in and just blend all of this stuff. And Plague Monks, uh, particularly, they counter Scurvy Dogs because of that anti-infantry, right? Similar to Rangers or any anti-infantry unit. Uh, because dogs count as infantry against the Vampire Coast... That's their primary mobility, right? And even bats as well count as uh, infantry. So using those anti-infantry units to help support mobile engagements is pretty nice. Although here the Ixus Triads count as anti-large. Trying to help protect against those haunters. But we sort of uh, do a little bit of a, a, a Mongol tactic against the Morngulls. Which is to uh, give an engagement, sort of do a feigned retreat. Some of these Skaven slaves are actually retreating, but then countercharge in and the Plague Pack here with their immune to psychology. They have a massive charge bonus as well. Uh, sensor Bears are basically shock infantry, right? 37 is actually ludicrously high for an infantry charge bonus. And the Bombers are going to make their presence felt here, but they're mostly silenced already between the Avalanche Mortars, which ha have mostly been protected. The cannon's been instead dedicating uh, to taking out the Plague Claw Catapults, which makes sense. The Plague Claw Catapults do a leadership component that will keep the zombies crumbling, while the Avalanche Mortars, uh, you know, they, while they are a bit more expensive, they will do a lot of damage as well, but the leadership effect, you know, is is potentially impactful. Here, though, Deathmaster Snitch gets caught up in a big kind of pitched engagement. I tried to snipe these Haunters, which was just a terrible idea to begin with. Uh, the Haunters absolutely are not snipeable by Snitch in melee, since they regenerate in melee, and they're really good anti-infantry damage as well. He really does not want to fight them in a straight-up fight here, even with the Rival Hide Talisman and the debuffs from the Assassin. We've got supporting Hounds in here, and Hounds actually trade very nicely with the Ixus Triads. A very nice Dance Macabre there from Adam Shadow, who's my opponent, uh, hitting all of those Hounds, and they'll do quite a bit of extra damage there, those Ixus Triads. Getting absolutely shredded, I'm going to try and pull them back. Likewise, Snitch and the Assassin have taken a decent amount of damage as well, which is why the balance power. Not looking great at the moment, but honestly, feeling okay. Avalanche Mortars are still online. The Catapults are mostly shut down at this point, but uh, at the same time, we've shut down most of the Bombers, so that's kind of mission accomplished there. The Plague Monks can now move in and clean up a lot of these units in melee. We've got some summons going as well to try and occupy some of these cannons, so... Yeah, things are going swimmingly, pun intended, against the coast. Uh, yeah. But again, I do want to try and keep Snitch and the Assassin alive if I can. I believe I've pulled them up and around here uh, somewhere. Nope, not yet. They're still trying to disengage here. Uh, Deathmaster Stitch definitely feeling, feeling the pain right now. They have done some decent damage to the Admiral trying to snipe her out. Um, but more summons being pulled up here, and the Hounds still holding the line for the time being. Thankfully, we've rushed enough to take out the cannons, and uh, at least one of them. These other two groups are still kind of holding for the time being. Oh man, those Plague Monks are so slow when they're debuffed there by the, the Morn Ghouls. But we're going to go ahead and freeze the Admiral in place and just kind of pull away here. Pop concealment bombs and try and get a better engagement. 
uh, with Snitch and the Assassin. Meanwhile, just continuing to pull up summons here, waiting for those scurvy dogs to finish uh, crumbling. And here, the sensor bears. I actually, yeah, it looks like I clicked an attack order to go after the Admiral. She's going to pull up some more zombies. Protect herself. Very nicely done there. And, uh, yeah, the... Sensor Bear is starting to run a little bit low on HP. They're not the greatest units in a grind fight. Like I said, they're more of shock infantry, although they will clean up a lot of chaff. Already 150 kills and climbing. Pretty impressive stuff, but the Plague Monks, unfortunately, that push back here do get terrified away that by the double Morn Ghouls. Might have potentially done some friendly fire with those Avalanche Mortars, but they're almost out of ammo anyway. But, uh, yeah, I see this uh, Admiral here kind of hanging around in the back, and with the Concealment Bombs, I've managed to maneuver... My assassins up and around the side. Let's see if Deathmaster Snitch can get back there. Uh, yeah, and then the Morngulls are really the biggest threats at this point, right? Pretty confident that if I can take out the, uh, the Admiral and with the leadership debuff from the, the contaminated effect from the Plague Pack, and I guess even the Plague Monk himself also has that effect, right? So if we can get rid of the leadership here, we might be able to force the Morngulls into crumbling. And then I can potentially beat them there. But balance power still not looking great for me as more summons are pulled up here. What is this, a pistol summon? Yes, looks like a pistol summon. Very nicely done. Going to turn around, start blasting my lighter armor units. Those plague monks. I mean, they do have some pretty good physical resistance, but they'll still take quite a bit of damage from those pistols. Very cost efficient there. Uh, here we finally get potentially the killing blow. Death Master's, sni Death Master's Sigil. On the Admiral, she takes a point-blank shot, but uh, the Morngulls are not quite able to get here in time. She, she is forced into crumbling because she's so low. The Morngulls do eventually show up and start to whack these characters around, but yeah, she is done for. Deathmaster accomplished his goal, and you can see immediately that just about sends these two Morngulls into crumbling. I do want to try and keep Deathmaster and the Assassin alive if I can, but unfortunately, I... Didn't do a clean kind of disengage there. Wasn't able to get away. And Deathmaster, I believe, gets swiped by a Morngul right there. Oh, man. So, double Lord down. The Crumbling has kicked in for one of these, but the other one uh, has not. And they have quite a bit of healing cap space left. So, I'm faced <clears throat> faced with a little bit of a dilemma. I can try and fight them in melee with what remains of my Ixious Triads and the Blight Scabs Plague Pack here, who will do quite a bit of damage to them. But the Morngulls have hunger, right? So they're going to be regenerating that entire time. Um, now, these Slingers, I can try and kite and shoot with them to a degree, but the Morngulls will be able to catch them. And, I, I mean, I have four, so if I spread out and do, like, a nice controlled kite, I might be able to get damage on them without getting them in melee. But for the time being, we're just kind of throwing, throwing the <laughs> kitchen sink at them, so to speak. All of the uh, troops lobbing in there. The uh, Ixious Triads in particular with their anti-large should do okay here. The armor doesn't matter too much for Morn Ghouls. It's mostly about the missile resistance and the and the hunger and everything. Um, they don't have magic resistance, right? Or physical resistance or anything? No. So the magic damage uh, from the Plague Pack doesn't have any interaction, but the contamination certainly can. And if they can force some crumbling here, that will be pretty decent. You can see this one actually has taken quite a bit of damage from those Ixious Triads. And from the focus fire of the Skaven Slave Slingers, just because there's so much volume here, even though they don't do much damage per shot, and they're not accurate at all either, uh, they're doing pretty well just from that uh, alone. Unfortunately, though, the Plague Priest gets routed away. That's my last kind of heroic unit, so it won't have any Encourage effects, or uh, I think I probably had maybe one or two uh, potential summons left from the, uh, the Clan Rats there. So that's, that's not the best for me, but we're able to do quite a bit of damage to this Haunter and force it into crumbling. Uh, the Triads come in and immediately get terrified away, allowing him to kind of regenerate his HP as he chases them off. So at this point, we're going to pop into Fast Forward as it is going to take a long time for me to execute this properly to <laughs> kind of kite these Morngulls out and uh, try and form up a Concave. You can see I'm kind of maneuvering... Uh, my sla Skaven Slave Slingers around, trying to spread them out so that if the Morngul pursues any one target, the others can kind of form a concave and continue firing, right? So Plague Priest gets finished off, Light Scabs, Plague Pack, and the Ixious Triads are all gone as well. Got just the Avalanche Mortars are still just chilling here. I haven't really used them in melee at all. Don't really want to lose them on the balance of power, so I'm kind of just ha keeping them hanging around mostly. And, uh, yeah, we're gonna try and kite that Morngul. This Morngul over here takes some volleys, manages to chase off a few units, but he is, in fact, 
left alone crumbling in the open field and with no no one to eat, no one to satisfy his hunger, he gets taken out. So now it's just this one. And uh, yeah, he is going to be able to consistently kind of grab at these Skaven Slave Slingers. But one of the issues is that because of his attack animations, like he'll do a big sweeping attack animation, but he doesn't actually physically grab the unit and hold it in place. Um, you know, like a unit of cavalry or infantry would because he's a single entity. The rats will kind of scatter around him and continue to flee. And so as he does his animations, which can take a bit of time to play out um, like that one, or especially like there when he turns to the side and then kind of goes out of the formation, he then has to spend time sort of running back in, and you see how the rats kind of continuously scatter away, so it's going to be hard for him to make consistent contact there. Um, despite the chilling aura and everything, he's also uh, exhausted, right? Whereas these guys are only tired, so he his speed will be significantly more debuffed than theirs, and that is definitely going to work to my favor as well. So we'll keep fast-forwarding. Just wanted to kind of explain those interactions there because uh, Adam and, and I were actually in chat while this was happening and he was wondering, and I was as well, why this Morngul wasn't able to catch these Skaven Slave Slingers as consistently. And you'll see in a minute that he'll, he'll have the same problem with some of these others as well. But I believe it's because he is at the lowest level of uh, vigor technically. These guys will be soon, these other Skaven Slave Slingers, I believe. But these ones technically only tired, so <laughs> they've been able to somewhat get away here. And now, for the slings, again, want to try and avoid melee as much as possible. Some of these units, like these Skaven Slave Spears here, are fresh, although they'll terrify instantly if I try and fight with them, so I'm mostly just kind of hanging back, trying not to lose them to the balance of power like some of these other units. Um, again, Avalanche Mortars kind of just hanging them out here to be a little bit of bait and just to keep, keep the balance of power from going too far, like right here. You can see these guys are right on the edge of that chilling aura, and uh, Adam was briefly switching targets over to this other other Skaven Slave Slinger, so that chilling aura dropped for just a moment, and now, obviously, back on, they get terrified away, but again, 26 speed, very tired, whereas the debilitated is the equivalent of exhausted, right? So, the speed differential is just enough, and I would need to look, uh, if you go to Total War, uh, TWWstats.com, I like, to, uh, I like to call it Total War Warhammer Stats. I'm not, a, I'm not an official site by any means, but it is a great community resource. And on that, you can actually look at every uh, unit card in the game. And not only that, but you can also apply the fatigue effects to it. So you can actually see what speed your unit will be moving at when it's exhausted, right? And we checked on Morngulls. I don't remember exactly. I want to say it was in the 30s range uh, when it was, I want to say like 38 maybe when it was fully exhausted. Um, and I mean, these Skaven Slaves do have obviously a little bit faster speed while that scurry away mechanic is active, uh, even though they are very tired as well, because it's sort of a percentage-based debuff, they're gonna be affected less in terms of speed than the, Mor than the Morngul Haunter. So, because of that, I'm gonna be able to consistently just barely squeak away, although I will be subject to some terror routes here. It's gonna be enough that the Morngul can't stay consistently in melee and how about that? Have you ever seen Skaven Slave Slingers carry a game? Actually, I think I might have a few times in the past, but they carry the game here. Oh, and let's just take a minute to appreciate the fact that this Morngul Haunter is crumbling. He's the only unit on the Vampire Coast roster, and we're just barely hitting army losses. He was probably crumbling for a good 10 seconds there um, before it actually decided to trigger army losses, which seems a little strange to me. You know, if the battle... If there's one unit left on the battlefield and its leadership is broken, for me as a as a Total War player, that should be battle over, right? That's how it's pretty much always worked. Um, but I guess not. I guess uh, technically he can be crumbling and not trigger army losses, which is just great. Gotta love Undead and the crumbling mechanic, but uh, yeah... A uh, fun one, well played to Adam there. Uh, I have to say, pretty happy with Plague Monks here, and although they didn't get that many kills outside of, you know, this 123 and almost 200 kills for the Plague Packs, um, I, I do think they're a really nice kind of DPS anti-infantry unit, and not only that, their high leadership makes them a, a, a pretty nice backbone uh, to a lot of Skaven armies. I say backbone, it's not like they're real heavily armored, but again, that leadership means they'll hold, certainly. And trade well against a lot of infantry-type targets, especially... 
Yeah, like defensive infantry, it kind of just depends, but I'll probably talk more about that another time. The Plague Pack, though, are a unit that I've been using a little bit lately, and I have to say I'm a huge fan. Uh, they're basically like unarmored Bestigore, but better almost in every way because of the the contamination effect. Like, they have so many unit models. They're, they're just really nice unit. Avalanche Mortars also did a great job, too. The Plague Claw Catapults as well basically did their job of neutralizing the bombers. The, which were the main threats to my Plague Monks, and then Plague Monks are able to move in and do quite a bit of damage. The Morn Ghouls, though, great pick here. Morn Ghouls are just a menace to deal with in this matchup. 75 kills there, 131 for this Haunter. Uh, definitely the bright, brightest spots, and some pretty good Hound play as well. The Scurvy Dogs, four Scurvy Dogs, a staple of a lot of Empire Coast builds. I think that's very solid, and especially the use of the, the Dance Macabre to kind of rush in and take take out the Ixus Triads. Like, they were kind of a non-factor, they, they did pull up both of their summons, not that they really did anything. They might have helped soak some hits, and so maybe Snitch didn't die. Uh, you know, he might have died a little bit earlier if, if it wasn't for that. But really, the Ixious Triads were very nicely neutralized by the Scurvy Dogs. And uh, yeah, it ended up being that, uh, like, some of these kills on Plague Monks, although the kill totals aren't that great, they actually um, ended up doing a lot of damage to the Scurvy Dogs, right? Which, the anti-infantry plays a part in. So yeah, I think I've rambled long enough for this uh, postcast. Big thanks to Adam once again. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you do like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button. Every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.